Well, hello there, guys, and welcome to the Battle of Vinegar Hill. The ideals of the American and French revolutions coalesced with the long-standing grievances of the native Irish and led to an uprising in 1798 AD. Unusually, the rebel United Irishmen attracted both Catholics and Protestants, which made this threat particularly dangerous. British Crown forces were stretched by war with revolutionary France, and regular troops had to be supported by an assortment of fencibles, militia, and yeomanry, whose battlefield value was in inverse proportion for their enthusiasm for brutal counterinsurgency operations. Hope for French assistance failed to materialize, and the Crown forces gradually regained the upper hand. In June, the insurgents in County Wexford determined to force a field action while they still had the strength and made their stand on Vinegar Hill. They were poorly armed, with most of their infantry described as pikemen. Uh, contemporary prints and archaeology show that many actually carried agricultural tools with improvised blades, hooks, and points like the much earlier bills. By June, the best of them had some training and could stand off cavalry or run down irregular infantry. The Crown forces were an organized, conventional, late European force and heavily outnumbered. Morale ref reflects discipline and training, not raw courage. So we're going to go ahead and jump in here, guys. And one thing I do also know is that for the Irish Rebellion of 1798, Vinegar Hill was pretty much the last stand of the Irish. This was their last chance to win. Uh, if they didn't win this battle, they knew they were pretty much finished. Uh, and we are playing with the British in this battle, being led by Major General Lake. Uh, and Major General Lake here, we've got a ton of different units. Uh, I do want to also thank Odinetheus for just making such a great uh, map. With the rebels falling back all over Ireland, you have characterized the forthcoming action as just a grouse shoot, which you plan to observe from a convenient hill. Two brigades will seize the Slaney River Bridge and move against the enemy rear, preventing any escape, while four more advance in a wide sweep towards Vinegar Hill. The rebels will be huddled together in a disorganized mob and bombarded by your superior artillery, followed by a bayonet and cavalry charge when they are once they are suitably softened up. Your three concerns are that General Needham's brigade is still far from the field, and only his mounted troops are likely to arrive in time. Too many of your units are militia, volunteers, or conscripts. They might find it hard to stand up to a wild rebel charge, and see the rebel commander, Reverend Roach, is reportedly on his way from Wexford with substantial reinforcements. So we have to finish this operation quickly, guys. If not, then I think the battle could certainly be lost. Uh, it has to be a battle that we win very, very fast before the Irish reinforcements arrive. We are outnumbered. We're not using the standard British Army units. We're essentially using uh, conscripts, raw recruits, etc. And that's going to make our jobs, oh man, it's going to make them a lot harder. So we're going to move up the yeomen. Um, and what I really just want to do is get these guys across the, across the river as quickly as possible so that they can start softening up the enemy troops, opening fire on them, etc. I'm pretty sure that our artillery can fire from this distance. Uh, and I think I want to go for maybe musketeers. I think they're more of a threat than pikemen right now. Let's open fire. 27. Wow, we definitely have superior artillery. That is awesome. Uh, let's move up and see if we can get another shot. No, we're going to have to get just a little bit closer. Uh, the Yeomanry Duff's Brigade might be able to get a shot. Nope. Even Duff's not able to get a shot. Um, so we'll move this unit up. We've got a few more groups of British troops that, of course, we want to send directly towards the Irish enemy uh, and see if we can't finish this battle off really, really quickly. Again, preferably before any enemy reinforcements arrive. Hey, Nathan Norman! Ha <laughs> ha! So you're going to break the Irish. Good times, eh, says Nathan. Oh, yes. Well, I mean, to be honest with you, um, I have to say... Um, the, you know, Ireland in general is a country that truly fascinates me, uh, but the most interesting thing to me is, of course, the sort of Irish uprising uh, post-1912. Those are the ones I know a little bit more about, and some, in one game that I feel should really be made, but maybe it's too controversial or nobody's willing to touch it, I would love to see a video game on the, uh, on the IRA against the British, some sort of, like, counterinsurgency game. I think it would just be amazing. Unfortunately, yeah, hasn't been made. I know there's a board game. Um, I forget the name, but uh, it's it's not the same. It's not the same thing. Okay, so up here, we also have this tiny group, and it looks like they've got the castle there. I think it's going to pr be pretty hard to break through the castle. Uh, and these skirmishers are actually trained skirmishers. So I'm kind of tempted not even to push forward, but I'll move forward. Enemy have reacted to ours by shooting it. Yeah, they definitely are trained skirmishers. They're shooting a lot better than our men are. So we have to try to um, overwhelm them with force here even the cannon is going to have to move up um but it is light artillery so that's probably why i was going to say at that distance heavy artillery would definitely make it all right boys i don't want to get too far off this hill so i'm just going to kind of get to the edge there and we want to make it to the river slaney here so that's that's kind of our main goal but it's going to take a while to get there hello how you doing bud 
You could always make it yourself. You use the Counter Strike as the drive for it. Oh man, I, I wish, man. If I, I'm not really a coder at all. If I had any coding skill. Um, I would absolutely go through with a bunch of different ideas. I think the best I could do is like write a, um, I don't know what you would, what the equivalent for this, for a game would be, but the equivalent of like a game script, um, the way you'd have like a movie script. I could probably do something like that, come up with like mechanics for the actual game itself, etc. Um, but in terms of building it, oh hell no man, I'd need a lot of money, which I, I don't have unfortunately. All right, here's some beautiful reactionary fire. Well, not that beautiful. We actually didn't do much damage. What I really want to see is the shooting phase. It's the United Irishman's turn. And one thing about the United Irishmen, the reason they're called, of course, the United Irishmen, um, that is terrifying is this is these are not just Catholics. So, like, the war that we saw in the 20th century, not really the war, but the guerrilla operations from the IRA against the British, was primarily um, done by Catholics. So the IRA were mostly Catholics. With the United Irishmen, not really. It was sort of a mix of both. Um, it was really, truly a nationalistic uprising, uh, a revolutionary uprising, and not really based on, on religion, per se. So here we go. Pretty much just trying to get independence for Ireland, period. And we've got to put a stop to that immediately. <laughs> we must put a stop to that. What will we ever do if the Irish get their independence? That's unacceptable. All right, let's start moving forward. Okay, maybe I'll actually keep the yeomans, uh, the cavalry back. Because I don't want them to get unnecessarily shot at. So I'll move forward over here. We're still not even a little bit close to getting a shot. It's going to take a while. Um, but at least we got the right idea. What I might do is like at least keep the cavalry behind the enemy. Let's see if we can... No, no way. Okay, Dundas. You know, with this group... Wow, okay, so this is where we really want to focus, because this is where the opening salvo will pretty much take place. Um, my biggest concern is, of course, the musketeers. Uh, the thing is, though, like, they're... Their pikemen, if they charge us, will break us, but we just want to stay at a distance far enough that we can pick off their pikemen without sustaining any damage ourselves. So that's what I'm going to try to do. I don't know how this is going to work. Um, I'll fire a little at the trained militia now. I'm going or the trained musketeers, pardon me. Um, next turn, or, or next unit. There we go. We got a disruption. Uh, next unit, I'm going to focus on the pikemen. Although now that we got the disruption, maybe we should keep firing at them. No, we'll, we'll fire at the volunteer pikemen here. And since they are volunteers, that should suggest that they're not really that well trained. You know, they're they are volunteers. They care about the cause, but maybe not you know not a lot of military training or anything like that. Uh, but the same is true with our men. So I'm not saying much. All right, boys, stop this Irish rebellion in its tracks. And I think for the castle, we might need to get close. We just disrupted the unit, which is beautiful. Um, I'm gonna take a shot moving up. I knew we would get that reactionary fire, unfortunately, uh, but there's there's no stopping it right now. So I think at this point, stopping would be the, the biggest mistake we could do. We've got to push forward, continuously push forward here, even sort of turn our troops there towards the enemy. Uh, and of course, we do have a little bit of cover here with the hedgerow. So I'm really hoping that the hedges will protect us from most of the enemy fire. Uh, Nathan Norman says you could also try a roleplay game. That's, um, that's definitely something I've wanted to do, because uh, we did a short campaign, it was like two or three episodes on Adam RPG, which is a role-playing game, um, and people seem to really like watching it, you know? Most of the other genres that I've gone for on this channel have been first-person shooters and um, maybe occasionally, like, fighting games, but I've never really done role-play, so it's something I might try. The problem is, you know, with role-play games, <clears throat> I mean, number one, I do a lot of talking in my streams anyway, but... With roleplay games, I'm gonna be I'm gonna need to read every single line of dialogue. It's a lot of work, uh, just just to do it, you know, so people can watch. Especially considering in a lot of RPGs, you're gonna have uh, maybe elements that you need to like save scum, etc. Uh, but it's it's an idea. I like it. I would need to like first of all select which RPG people would want to watch. That's probably the most important thing, um, and then from there I could I could decide on it. Man, those Irish—they're getting some great shots from the top of Vinegar Hill there. Come on, boys. <clears throat> All right, residual shooting phase. Let's hope this is on our... This is going to work for us here. Oh, uh, just two. It's really not enough. The 19, though, from the artillery is great. we got to get more attacks like that.
Okay, guys, we just fragmented the first enemy unit. This is an okay start. And we're just shooting the hell out of the Irish up here on the hill. As long as we can keep, keep that up, uh, then I think we'll be all right. Okay, here we go. Keep on moving forward with the other battalions here. I wish they weren't so damn far from Vinegar Hill, but it's the position we find ourselves in. So I'm going to try to do sort of a united force here. Um, as you can see, I'm sort of merging these two groups. Uh, and I think by doing this, we should be able to approach in greater strength. We'll approach the hill in greater strength. If you take a look at the Irishmen on the hill, we're actually the ones outnumbered here. Um, there's a lot of Irishmen up there. Luckily, you know, as we learned in the beginning of this battle, most of them just have farms implements. Not many have muskets. The ones that do are a danger, but again, not many really do. So let's see what we want to do here. Uh, first of all, I want to try and open fire. Fragmented them with the cannon. So we could potentially break them with just a few well-placed shots here. Or we could go for a charge. I'm going for the charge. The Composite Light Battalion, Moore's Brigade. This is a light brigade, but we managed to break them. And there we go. Enemy's going to run here. We're going to chase, and will lead us into the other train musketeers, potentially. So I'm immediately going to take a position and start firing. Defensibles! Can do it, boys. Alright, for Duff, um... Again, we could charge and we'd probably come out on top, but we're not in a position where we should be uh, right now. So let me see if I can break this unit. That's what I really want to do. We're going to keep our distance for now. Even though they have the hill. 22 breaks. Beautiful. Morale check. No, no morale check. That was a really nice shot there by the line battalion. Open up. I think that's all the damage we can do today to the enemy. Maybe one more shot here at the volunteer pikemen from our royal artillery. Duff is an amazing artilleryman. We can see that here. Unfortunately, I think that's going to be it for this turn in terms of shots fired. What is this? Oh, okay, this is just a Major Lake, or General Lake, pardon me. <clears throat> um, yeah, we can still get a shot off with the artillery back here, although I think this artillery is really poorly placed. Just look at the distance of our, of our cannons here. Uh, we could open fire on their cannons. We could also open fire on their volunteer musketeers. I think that's what I'm going to go for. We can take a few artillery shots. Our men have trained for it night and day. Icon Rostov. What's up, Bostova? How you doing, buddy? Any tips for Pride of Nations? Ooh, interesting question, man. That's a game I haven't played in a long time, but a really good one. If anybody likes age odd games, I would highly recommend checking out Pride of Nations. Uh, I think it's funny Bostova mentioned it because the thing about Pride of Nations is that uh, it has wars, like we spoke of earlier, that are not mentioned in other games. So you can play the Boer War in that game. Uh, although I think we could also play the Boer War in this game, believe it or not. All right, here we go, boys. We do get one more shot. Wow, nice shooting for a cavalry unit. Okay, let's end the turn. If anybody wants to put the weapons being used in this battle down below, I'd appreciate it. I know, once again, that the Irish have few muskets. They do have some, as we can see. Uh, but I want to know what rifles the British are using. If somebody puts the correct one there, I'll, uh, I'll name it here on the stream. No damage, beautiful. No damage. So right now their artillery, I, I mean, they may, maybe they're just putting like forks and knives into the cannons. They don't have any real cannonballs. Um, but we'll see what happens. Now, that unit is disrupted, and again, it's another musketeer unit, but we also had our cavalry there on the edge disrupted, so that's a cause for concern. Here we go. Enemy is charging us. I was worried about this. I was worried about this. Now, we if we can manage to evade, we might actually be able to brutally destroy those train musketeers. They'll be out in the open. They'll be forced to fight. It's going to be a very interesting experience. Let's put it that way. This area is going to be a brutal part of the battlefield. Even though we don't have as many units over here, it's going to go nuts. So keep your fingers crossed, guys. Here we go. 
See if they can stand up to British fire. I don't believe so. Look at that. We'll break them for the king before Christmas. Actually, I have no idea when this happens, so maybe before Christmas would be quite a ways away. I know it was uh, 1798, but I'm not sure of the month. <coughs> okay, guys, it's our turn. I love that the United Irishmen got enraged. They got a little butt hurt and immediately charged out to try and meet our men. And I think this gives us an opportunity. If I don't take advantage of this, I really suck. So let's see what I can do. Uh, first things first, get a nice little artillery strike, 31 men down. Uh, and we could even go for a charge, and that's exactly what I'm going to do. Um, one thing I might do before going for a charge is to fire. So now he's fragmented, so he'll almost certainly break. Yes, baby! 46 killed! And this is Fa Father Curran's column, guys. Uh, this is one of the uh, the Catholic priests that were actually supporting the rebellion. So we're going ahead. We're chasing him down. It's the first group of Irishmen dealt with. And I'm going to charge this group as well with the Fencibles. The Fencibles have done so well in this fight. And I think they can take down the Irish. And there we go. Now, unfortunately, we broke off from combat, but clearly we outmatched them. So we got to keep pushing up. The thing we need to worry about is, as you can see here, we've got Father Curran's trained spearmen. By the way, look at that unit there to show the trained spearmen in the lower right. Uh, actually, not, so <laughs> not something I would want to get very close to. Um, definitely looks dangerous. So they've still got those, um, but we just need to keep on pushing uh, what I think is an advantage. And see if we can't break them before their help arrives. Okay. All right, boys. Keep your wits about you. Um, let's just open fire. Again, I'm still keeping my distance. That was the suggestion given, at least in the beginning of the battle, is don't necessarily get into close combat with the Irish. Because even though they don't have many muskets, they've got those spearmen, man, and... They are damn good in close combat. You know, they, uh, it doesn't make much difference if we have guns, if they can just reach out with those pikes and stab us before we can load. And that's exactly what would happen. I think for now, though, I'm going to have to focus fire on the Spearman unit because we can't have overly strong melee, or, uh, melee units here. So I'm really going to try to weaken them in any way I can. How can they... That's, oh, I guess maybe it's just charging? I don't... That's weird. All right. Come on, boys. Nine. Oh, I thought for sure we'd have them. Well, it's a start, guys. It is a start. Uh, Icon Rosso says, I just started getting into age odd games. Uh, Nathan says, how did your white Russian campaign go? Did you restore the Tsar? No, man. It's it's a very tough... Um, uh, age odds... Um, oh, what's it called? The, the, um, the Russian Civil War game, which I love, by the way. I would highly recommend people get that as well. Um, although I have noticed a little more bugs in that than your typical age odd game. Uh, it's kind of frustrating where the game will kind of just crash um, out of nowhere. Um, Revolution Under Siege, that's it. And I did do a white Russian campaign, as Nathan mentioned. However, um, no, man, it was brutally tough. They, they, to complete an Age Outs campaign for the Russian Civil War, I think it would probably take us maybe, maybe a year on this channel. It would probably be like 150 episodes. And uh, whether or not we would actually get to victory is, is I don't know. <laughs> I'm not really sure. That's a great game to bring up, though. It is awesome. I would uh, recommend uh, to Bostova um, that you get Alia Akta Est. That, in my opinion, that and American Civil War II are probably the best Aegeod games. Um, I know right now people are really liking the new uh, the new one that just came out. I people have been asking me to play it. I'm sorry, guys. It, it just I, look. I, I've seen Imperator. You know, I I, I didn't think Imperator was great, but visually, um, I prefer it to the uh, Aegeod's game. Um, I also prefer it with the character selection, so like being able to have a senator or a consul. That stuff all appeals to me. Um, the uh, Field of Glory Empires to me honestly looks kind of like... Um, I'm sorry, it just doesn't look good. <laughs> I'm not typically a guy, I think most of you know, that cares much about graphics and things like that. But um, that game in particular really puts me off. And I, I don't like the fact that you need two games to be able to like really enjoy the experience. Maybe I'll look into it eventually, but right now I'm kind of like, nah. I'd rather play Ali Akdes, actually which is another Age Outs game. All right, these United Irishmen are really putting up a stand. Um, they're not moving forward with their pikemen, so they fully intend to stay on that hill. And I think at this point, the question arises, should we charge these guys once we get there? 
Um, or should we just stay back, continue firing, and potentially uh, have their reinforcements arrive? I don't know, man. It's, it's a tough question. Uh, we'll have to wait and see. Okay, here we go. Enemy is routing. Get off the field. We got a lot of enemies routing right now. 7% of the enemy army. <clears throat> and so far, I'm loving the enemy light artillery. Well, actually, now it's doing pretty well at, at this distance, but before it was doing terribly. Here we go. Yes. All right, so one of the units is trying to escape here, uh, but, but the pikemen are coming off the hill, guys. This is what we feared. Now we have to worry about getting charged by pikemen. So I think we might have to put all of our shots at this point into the actual pike unit and see if we can't break a few of them before they make contact. Damn. Really good shooting by the Irishmen there. And they're getting close with their trained spearmen. This could be problematic. Okay, Major General Johnson's brigade moves on Enniscorthy. Um, I believe these are our boys, thank goodness. So, yes. Oh, I'm so happy. Um, so, we get um, the reinforcements here. We should definitely try and break the enemy's trained muskets and save our boys over here from almost certain destruction if this continues the way it's going. Although, it's actually pretty close, but a little too close for comfort. So, let's try and make a difference here. We're still too far away from open to be able to open fire, but I think with the line battalion Johnson's brigade, we should be able to shoot. No, wow, that's that's a little strange. All right, fair enough. So, do we focus on these guys directly in front of us, or do we focus on the trained spearmen behind them? The trained spearmen are really dangerous. <laughs> Although these guys just got fragmented, the composite light battalion. And what if we just run right through and shoot at them? No, that's not going to work. 50. We're knocking them down like flies. I'm charging. We will take this damn town. Oh, they ran away again. So another retreat there. Um, I'm going to move forward. How dare them? How dare they? Or how can they possibly be able to uh, open fire at us after a retreat like that? I raid Spartan. How you doing, buddy? Total War Kingdoms of Britain was fun. I played as Wales, he says. Oh, cool. Uh, British weapons, brown best artillery, used shrapnel uh, for on first times. Hey, Alex, how you doing, buddy? Yeah, Icon Ross stuff. I totally, I totally hear you, man. Um, I have both. It's just, it's just the idea behind it. Um, it doesn't sit well with me. It really doesn't. I rarely find a strategy game where I'm just like really get a feeling that I'm not going to enjoy it and I get it with Empires. I really do. I'm just like, I'm, I'm not going to like this. Okay. Shoot down these spearmen. Come on, boys. Don't let these damn Irishmen get to you. Come on. I hate that there's a fragmented unit back there that we can't get to. Let's see if our artillery can get to it, maybe. Oh, yeah. Fingers crossed. Seven? No! <laughs> Not quite enough for a break, I don't think. Let's move the fencibles forward. Unfortunately, the enemy uh, spearmen, as we can see here, can take a lot of hits. And for the dragoons, we only have um, charge units. So I'm going to keep them here, just in case potentially we could run over here and try to hit the volunteer muskets. But I'm going to start moving up reinforcements. And in fact, we might bring like four, some of these guys over here to help these men over here. If I say over here again, please shoot me. <laughs> Let's proceed. Here we go. <clears throat> um, so we can actually shoot at the artillery. Yeah, why not? I always prefer to break artillery with a charge because it's very easy. It's just a single charge. Nine times out of ten, you're going you're gonna to force that artillery to retreat. But seeing as we can't do that right this second... We'll go for the next best thing. I'm surprised our carbines are out of reach at that distance. I would think we'd be able to get a hit. Fair enough. So 
So only a few of our units are close enough to open fire. We want to obviously get our entire army uh, into a position where they're consistently getting residual uh, shots every turn. But we'll see how that works. Oh! Right, not too bad. Not too bad. Although, we sort of charge for no reason. Okay, here we go. Hey, Araman, how you doing, buddy? Always good to see you, man. We've got to get back to that uh, Total War Three Kingdoms campaign. Me and uh, Araman started a Three Kingdoms campaign. I think it would be quite fun. I'm not sure how many people can do the multiplayer. I think it's only two uh, for a co-op campaign, but uh, it would be really fun to get, you know, the channel involved. If you guys want to join a campaign, I'd love to do, like, a channel-wide um, Total War Three Kingdoms campaign. That would be absolutely awesome. Oh, uh, let's see... I guess the idea initially would be to take out the Han, and then after taking out the Han Empire, people can go do whatever they want, go for a free-for-all. Usually any time I've done, like, community multiplayer games, the rule is um, you can't have an alliance of more than two. So, for instance, if you've got a friend you want to work together with, and you let, you got, you let each other know, it, you know, in private Discord chat, that's fine, but you can't do, like, groups of three. It's just, it ends up overpowering the game, and, and that particular team ends up dominating. Go! Nope. I love that they're still running, although the uh, distance that they're having to cover upsets me, and the reason being, the longer that a unit is on the field, the higher the chance that it'll rally. So, all this land these guys have to cover to retreat, there is definitely an, op an opportunity uh, for them to rally up. Oh no, oh no, we got the first charge going here, I think. And it's going to be against a damn... Damn cavalry unit, so they're gonna they're gonna get a really nice charge. But see, now that they're um, all all actually bunched up together, this is an opportunity to try to break one of those units at least and cause a massive uh, sort of domino effect here. Whether or not we can make that happen is is questionable. All right, fingers crossed. This is our residual shooting phase, and it needs to go well. Oh, no, come on. That artillery was doing so well at the beginning of the battle. We were getting 67 kills. Just insane stuff. Now they have really, really, um, maybe they've run out of powder. They don't have as much powder for the shot. It's just not going well. There we go. Some nice volleys there. All right, beautiful. That's what we need to see. Um, our reinforcements getting some shots at this distance, and now these reinforcements can get into combat and start engaging the trained spearmen. So I have a little bit of hope here. We can even engage their disrupted unit, but I'm going to go for the spearmen right here, Father Kern's column. Uh, this is a pretty good column. This is pretty much their equivalent of veterans. In fact, I'm not sure if somebody can tell us, somebody more um, familiar with uh, uh, Pike and Shot, uh, what's higher, uh, trained or veteran? I think trained might be higher. So we could go for a charger. We'd almost certainly win it. But these guys have a bad habit of retreating every time we charge. Let's go for the charge. Breaks! Beautiful instant break right there. We're really trying to get into the city itself. Um, and what's interesting about this battle, I, I know some facts about Vinegar Hill. So most of the fighting was done here on top of Vinegar Hill. The British did win this battle. So if we lose, shame on us. But the interesting part was that then the Irish retreated, and they retreated into the town of Enniscorthy. And there was sort of like urban warfare going on here, house-to-house -house combat, uh, and eventually, of course, the, Brit the British did uh, come out victorious. But um, with all of the wars going on for the English during the time against the French, um, it was, you know, it was definitely maybe Ireland's one of their best opportunities to have gained independence. Uh, this battle, however, made it certain that uh, the Irish would not be able in no way um, to beat the British. Uh, after this battle, it was pretty much like tiny skirmishes for a little while, but uh, they never fielded an army this large again. Let's see. Oh, you let us down again. Really? I think Moore's Brigade is working with the Irish at this point. <laughs> I don't trust Moore. 
I'm gonna get this cavalry the hell out of here because I really don't want to lose them. Oh, no, no damage. Oh, we're okay. Um, and I'm gonna target that unit right there. Again, we need to try and break one of these pikemen units quickly. Now, actually, a draw would not go as poorly as I expected it to. A charge, excuse me. However, it's still not peaches and cream. Win chance, 16%. Lose chance, 11 Draw chance, 74 Yeah, I don't feel comfortable with it. So I'll turn, I'll fire, but I think that's about my going to be my entire contribution. Uh, and unfortunately, we put our cavalry in a terrible position. Now, the thing is, our grenadiers, grenadiers in general, for those of you that don't know, um, were usually compromised of pretty big men, large guys, um, who kind of knew what they were doing. So maybe if our grenadiers can get a charge here, I'll consider that. I'm actually tempted to charge them up here with the pike, uh, with the line battalion, Duff's Brigade. Let's do it. We are charging uphill. Keep that in mind. However, look at that. 64. Excellent damage. Excellent, excellent damage. Um, and now what we want to do... Can we even do anything? We're going to move here and prepare for a potential charge against the enemy. So for now, we'll fire at the raw pikemen. Raw pikemen, of course, have no training, little to no training. Uh, so they should be an easier unit to break. And I can't forget, we also have these guys. I'm going to bring them up. And see if they can't contribute to this little battle going on here. Fire at Barker's Column. 33. We are devastating them with, uh, with musket fire. So the musket fire is really the key. Getting those residual shots consistently is really the key. Let's get up here. We are really at the base of the hill at this point, so if the enemy wants to charge us, I would recommend they do it pretty soon. I think I'm just going to turn with the Light Dragoons. I was trying to just get a, a hit there, but I guess we have to get pretty close to use those carbines. 28, man. We don't usually get um, shots uh, shots that are this good um, in this game, but I guess we're getting quite lucky here. 35. Uh, they are also volunteer musketeers, so again, a little bit of a lack of combat training. And let's see if we can go ahead and break the enemy on contact with our cavalry. Indeed, we can, and they have dispersed. What I am worried about is we are getting deeper and deeper into this battle, and I haven't seen reinforcements. And I anticipate enemy re reinforcements are showing up pretty soon. Could go for the charge here. Let's do it. They actually accepted the charge, disrupted their unit. They should have ran. But I guess they thought they would be able to hold it. And now let's focus on those trained pikemen. Again, the trained pikemen, that's what really scares me. The rest, the volunteers, etc. Meh. Not really that worried. But those trained pikemen are bad news. Alright. I think we've fired every shot. We should be able to get one more here. Oh no. Now we're out of range of... Oh look, we're still in range of some of their units. I did not expect that to be the case. So it's the elevation that's allowing that, since we're quite high up. Take a look here at the chat. He says maybe the cannons are running hot. I wonder if these cannons even could run hot. Maybe they could. Maybe they could. I think Araman's point is the, is, is the one that, that's spot on. The thing about round shot is that, you know, you might hit the target head on. You might completely miss the target. You know, it's... The same is probably true with the weapons being used at the time, even even with the rifles. Um, Aramon says cavalry is great in this game, but you can't just set them up in front of enemy infantry like that and not expect some losses due to fire. Yeah, absolutely. I realized right away when I saw that that cavalry unit couldn't move anymore, I was like, oh, crap, I made a mistake. Because they were stopped right in front of my men, my infantry, and I was like, this is going to turn out very poorly. No fear of that rabble. Deliver your fire, sir, in advance. <laughs> Indeed. Okay, let's see. I like the attitude so far. I, I think you guys, some of you, you, you're absolutely, you've got it. You've got it. Ooh. Mounted scouts. Okay, let's see what we want to do here. So we could still get the guard squadron. Let's see if they have um, a carbine. They do not. This is risky, obviously, but I'm going to go over here. I probably shouldn't have turned that way, but I'm going to try to go for the peasants back here. Yes, the Irish actually have peasants. Uh, just standard peasants. They've got some pikes, I guess, um, waiting to fight us. Okay, let's see if we get a shot here. No. Wow. 
That's very surprising. We almost forgot to move the uh, fencibles back here. And maybe one more shot. Come on. No, there's no way. All right, boys. We'll end the turn. Back to the Irishman. Put up a good fight, I think, considering the lack of weapons they have. But um, I'm hoping we come out on top. Again, if they get those reinforcements, I'm going to be really annoyed. Because they already outnumber us. So with extra reinforcements, things, things could go very poorly. I wonder what they were, where they would arrive from, though. I guess it would have to be the other side of um, Vinegar Hill. There is no other side of Vinegar Hill, so it would have to be the um, the southeast side, I guess. Volunteer Musketeers burns columns slightly disadvantage our offensible squadron. Did not want that to happen. All right, let's see if they'll charge off this hill now with the pikemen. Wow. I was worried about this. Yeah, those pikemen are coming off that hill for sure. Uh, and with repeated fire, they disrupted one of our units. Usually, we're crushing them with our own fire, but in that case, yeah, they definitely got us. All right, beautiful disrupted one of the um, pikemen units. Come on, that's a charge. Yeah, it's going to go into the cavalry. Big mistake with moving the cavalry there. Now, they're incredibly, incredibly... Um, our Dragoon Squadron fought off those pikemen, only losing 3 and killing 24. But now that they get that flank attack, they're going to get all of those points back for sure. Um, definitely damaging our unit. We could potentially have to charge in here ourselves um, and see if we can't make a big difference. Once again, we have uh, damaged the enemy peasants. We were going for them, but it seems they came to us. Uh, but that's only because their pikemen have us trapped in here. And again, and again, another fragmentation on the Irish side. Guys, we need to beat them it fast. Don't forget, if you guys are new here, guys, to join us on our Twitch channel at uh, www.twitch.tv slash agrippamaxentius. Uh, follow us there. Uh, you can also use Super Chat here. I'm not sure if Super Chat is even working anymore. Um, and you can also follow us if you're new here. Subscribe to us if you're new here. Um, if you want to get the YouTube subscription thing, I wouldn't recommend it because I'm not really offering anything. I don't know what to offer yet, <clears throat> but we can actually, we kind of got a, a letter or an email from YouTube anyway, um, saying that now we have the ability to sell merch, things like that. Um, I could basically make a t-shirt design, maybe come up with like some cool strategy sayings. Um, Ali Akdest, as an example, make some t-shirts. Uh, and at that point, I can offer that as, like, compensation uh, for a subscription here. But I I'm, or I'm not sure it's called a subscription. I think it's called a join. And pretty much you uh, you join uh, the YouTube Red program uh, under my tutelage. But I, I really don't recommend it. I just don't know enough about it to recommend it, frankly. There we go. They broke that cavalry. We, we knew that was going to happen. Unfortunate, but sort of par for the course. Now we have to hope that we can break those spearmen. All right, British turn. Now, I know we can break this unit, the um, the peasants. However, we don't get to decide this fight because we're the ones being charged. So, hmm. Definitely opening fire. I am not charging them. 32, disrupted. 12, yeah, that's not going to do much damage. What about a nice little canister shot? Well, cannon shot. Don't have canister shot at this distance. Um, hmm. No, it doesn't look like he can really do much to him. So we'll get the unit behind at least. Not bad. Disrupted. Oh, man. We're so close to being able to break some of these guys. But it's taking a while. 24. How can we not charge? Okay, so we can charge, but it's a 17% chance of a win. That's not great, but they are disrupted. I'm going for it. Here we go. Well, king and country, we'll make the charge, boys. We'll also try to break this unit, and this charge would also work quite well. 55 enemy unit disrupted. If we can get the grenadiers in there, we can break this unit right now. Composite Grenadier Battalion, guys. 51. They are fragmented again. Okay, so I lied. I thought they would break this turn, but probably next turn. 
Let's get the Dundas Brigade. And Dundas uh, Brigade even has some cannons here. Uh, some, some very small cannons to assist in dishing out the damage here to the enemy. Thank you, Icon Rostov. I want a t-shirt. Um, Nathan says, never expose your flank to the enemy oblique. Order your men to unleash... Come on, unleash your inner fritz. <laughs> Uh, Alex says, the only use for me subscribing to YouTube Reddit is that I can more easily multitask on my iPad. Oh, okay. So I guess it's like you don't, you don't get ads or anything like that, right? Thank you so much, Icon Rostov. Icon Rostov, uh, aka Bostova on Twitch, is the absolutely one of the most supportive people here on the channel. So I really appreciate guys like him. I appreciate all of you, of course. Uh, but when people are able to give from their actual wallets, yeah, it does help. I'm not going to lie. Benjamin Burns says, this game is fun to watch, but I'm just not a fan of turn-based games myself. Have I played Field of Glory Empires yet? I, I'm, I, I don't. I, I'm not saying this to be like I sound like a jerk or anything, but I, I actually discussed it earlier in the chat. Um, I don't want to repeat what I said, and not because I'm like, oh, you should have listened or anything like that. Just because, um, you know, I have a close relationship with the company. I don't feel good saying bad things about the game, but I'm just gonna say, yeah, I'm, I, I don't, I don't, I don't really plan on playing it unless somebody can give me good reason to. Um, holy damn, this turn is a slaughter system. Yes. Let's get back. Let's see if we can't turn it into a slaughter for the Irish. And I think we can. Um, so especially here where the enemy's fragmented. Let's see if we can just go ahead and break them. I'll try to break them with the artillery first. They're only hitting one, man. Kind of frustrating. We finally broke the enemy. There we go. And now we want to turn on the trained musketeers. And we can work on these guys little by little uh, and eventually smash them. They're stuck here. They can't retreat because they've got their other units, their uh, their friendly units, in the way doing the exact same thing. So we're just going to slaughter them. You want to see a slaughter. These trained musketeers have nowhere to run. Uh, that's Father Kern's trained musketeers. Let's move up even more. And at this point, uh, we've made it to the castle. We want to cross over to the tiny town of Enniscorthy, and from there, move on the actual Irish uh, on top of Vinegar Hill once again. So let's take a look here. And again, this charge, not such a bad charge. Before I do it, though, I'm going to try to soften up the enemy. This is just a volunteer pikeman unit. 55, we fragmented them already. What did I tell you? And now the composite grenadiers. So once again, even with them charging, we do quite well. Yeah, I am going to unleash my my inner berserker here, and I am going to charge. I think you're absolutely right, man. That's what we're going to do. Um, over here, same thing. We have the, the advantage, technically. And let's see if we can knock down that fragmented train pikeman unit. Uh, we've at least got them badly damaged, so I don't think they're going to be a threat anymore for the rest of the battle. Come on, come on, come on. Oh, I wish we could hit them from here. Oh, we can't hit anything from here. Oh, that's so annoying, man. That is so frustrating. Okay, so we can hit the retreating unit. We can also hit one of these guys. Not a bad... The raw skirmishers. They will easily break. But I'm actually going to hit the Volunteer Musketeers just to make sure they don't get any ideas of returning to the fight. Well, they didn't get any hits, but hopefully the, the actual artillery scared the hell out of them anyway. And I'm still moving the, the uh, Yeomanry Squadron. They just really aren't rallying. I don't think they want to be in this fight. I think they've had it. Oh, we get a shot to the fragmented units. Please. Oh, man, still not breaking. Still not breaking. All right, guys, we'll end the turn there. You also get access to some exclusive shows. Oh, I didn't realize that. Think <laughs> He's saying that they're all real horrible. Think Netflix originals show terrible, but even worse. Oh, please give us some examples, Alex, please. Like, I'm trying to think of, of what would be on there, like a really mediocre B-movie. <clears throat> it's got to be stuff like... Um, Oh, God, what's Peter Jackson's film before um, before Lord of the Rings? Peter Jackson made a movie that was like a horror movie about a monkey. And it was actually like a pretty, it was actually a pretty funny movie, but 
I, I could see that being on there because uh, it's like it's really cheap, really poorly made, really dark comedy that not many people would understand. <laughs> All right, let's see what the Irishman will do here. Anything for independence, right? <clears throat> Keep in mind that this this war happened little more than 30 years after the American War for Independence. Uh, and so, you know, they certainly took ideas from both the French Revolution uh, and the American War of Independence, uh, but unfortunately didn't work out for them. Well, f maybe for my British viewers, fortunately, right? Uh, but unfortunately for the Irish here, uh, it didn't work out for them. Now, everybody knows that today Ireland is free, with the exception of Northern Ireland, which uh, I believe even by... Um, um, even by vote, uh, uh, what's it called when you when you call a vote in a certain district, um, um, when you draft a uh, uh, anyway, you you guys know what I'm talking about. I think uh, people in Northern Ireland voted overwhelmingly in favor uh, to remain uh, English. So I think that's fine. I think things have worked out fairly well, all things considered, with all the violence that has gone on in that conflict. We broke another Irish unit. Speaking of violence, there we go. Enemy unit dispersed. Thank goodness. Now, unfortunately, uh, they did break the cavalry um, with those pikemen, and we knew that was going to happen. They also disrupted one of the units here. That's not good. We were hoping we would pass the melee um, phase. However, thankfully, we beat the enemy there, the trained spearmen, Father Murphy's column. And anytime we get trained spearmen off the field, that is a good thing. Uh, they're really the main threat. Although, if you guys see this red blob right here, I think the enemy re reinforcements just arrived. <sighs> Oh no, oh no, oh no. Alright, here we go. Our boys are actually just charging. Um, they're in a frenzy right now. Let's see if the United Irishmen have gotten any reinforcements. I certainly hope not. Although, thankfully, their downhill charge worked terribly. And hopefully we can uh, use that against them. Just a lot of Irish units being disrupted here. But not fragmented, which is worrying me. With disruption, you can absolutely rally back quite quickly. Oh boy. Wow, that was a nice shot on their end. Uh, from the volunteer musketeers right into the side of uh, poor Duff's brigade. Okay, they did get their pipe in out. I, I was worried about that. They did manage to get them across the bridge in time. Uh, so we'll probably move our boys back just a bit, um, keep a wide berth, let them route our guys, and then just open fire and shoot the hell out of them. Oh, that's not good. We've got some uh, enemy reinforcements, guys. The Irish have brought reinforcements to the battle. This is a nightmare. We still have a chance, though, to crush uh, the units we have here in front of us. Let's hope that we can do that. Come on. Guys, I expect better shots than that. Melee phase. Keep your fingers crossed. This is going to be very important. Needham Scouts Brigade following shortly. Okay, so we are going to get some scouts. Not really that useful, frankly. Uh, yeah, they finally broke that unit. At this point, we just need to keep them away. I'm hoping they're not going to charge our other units. We just need to knock out that Spearman unit very, very quickly. Can't believe they broke our Grenadiers here. That is shocking. Yeah, that is truly shocking. Got to see if we can offset this situation. Come on, boys. Very even fighting along the line. Really not... Nobody really has an advantage here. This is just very even. Uh, it definitely gave us the impression that we were going to do better than the enemy, but that doesn't seem like it's the case right here. Okay, we can charge here. Let's break the volunteer musketeers here. You've stood against the crown. You'll pay the price. 33 frog... frag... fragmented. <laughs> fragmented. They are fragmented. I like to see that. Fragmentations are good. 
Um, we could probably break that guy with a charge. But maybe I'd rather get in front of this guy so he can't charge our unit here. Although, no, we're actually still in a fight. We're already in a fight with them. Um, yeah, let's move up. I'm just hoping he's not going to... I'm just hoping he's not going to retreat. And we broke him. Beautiful. So nice little charge there. Um, unfortunately, we didn't get to follow it up into the mounted scouts. I would hope. I was hoping they would keep charging into Burns Column, but I think, at least on that end, we're all right. Hmm. This is where I'm not so sure of what to do. Uh, we could immediately break them here, but that would mean not getting a shot at the trained pikemen, which I think is a mistake. So yeah, we're we're gonna fire at the train, or we're gonna charge the train pike. No, never mind. Look at that. Look at that. Oh my goodness. Terrible idea. What about here? Nope. Terrible. It looks like unfortunately those guys are stuck out there. Um. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and charge them. Enemy will break on contact. And I could try to get up here with the yeomanry, but that pikeman unit would probably destroy me. So I'm not gonna even try. One, we really need to try and disrupt as many units as possible, or fragment them rather. Uh, even the disruption isn't really enough. There's that fragmented unit right there. Gonna get a shot on it with the cannons. He's quite close, but only two damage. Come on, 26. Come on, you can do this. Break them. I'm going to get this damn cavalry out of here, too. He's not really doing much. Except getting fragmented, further fragmented. Breaks. Wow, we got lucky. And it was only seven there. We did manage to get a break. Although this unit is itself pretty badly injured. Uh, but those trained pikemen seem to be running. Okay. What do we do with you, son? Not really much to do with you. That's pretty much all I could think of. Um, and if I could get a shot at any of these units, man, that would be great, but it doesn't seem like that's going to work. Okay, let's focus here. Let's focus on getting across the damn bridge. That's what I think is important. Um, so, charge. Looks like they've holed up in the castle. I didn't expect that. I thought that was all the units they had, but they've still got some boys here. So let's get up there to that castle and try to take it. Despite them only having one unit, with them having a castle position, it's going to be a little bit harder for us to uh, to do what we need to do here. All right, come on. Destroy these spearmen. Just three hits. Just three. Really, guys? Wow, that's disappointing. Okay. You can surrender now, Father. We'll let you live. All right, so here's Needham Scouts. I'm not really sure how they're going to help us here. Um, I guess these units that seem to have rejoined the Irish, uh, we can try and knock them out. Nice! 22! That's kind of hits I'm looking for. Hmm. Really hoping that those fragmented yeomanry will uh, shape up and get back to the fighting. But it looks like they may be out for good. Oh, nice! I didn't think we'd get a single hit, but eight! And we actually fragmented them. Pretty nice. Unfortunately, we don't have any units that could hit them. I don't believe so. Wait a minute. Both of these cannons are in range, guys. This is my lucky day. Hopefully, they get him on the residual shooting phase, and I think then we could actually completely knock him out. Such a shame we can't get him with this cannon. All right, let's get this guy. So what do you guys think? Do you think the Irish reinforcements will be enough to help the Irish win this one? Hey, Derek Pacifico. How you doing, buddy? Buddy. Musket has longer range than a pike, but a pike has a longer range than a bayonet. Yes, exactly. Oh my god, Alex is talking to us about the shows available here. <laughs> so it's, um, Sideswiped, I've never heard of it. <laughs> we show about a woman dating all of her Twitter matches. 
<laughs> Bad internet is each sketch comedy series about technology feeling surprising. Oh, God. Jeez. It's like it could be written by a, by a middle school classroom quite easily in a, in a short story class. That's too bad, man. I did see a few good ones. I could have sworn I saw... I mean, if, and I could be mistaken on this, uh, there are, like, certain movies that you can buy here or rent or whatever for, like, three bucks, I think. Um, do those become free once you get red? Because some of them are good. No, I'm not saying it's a, it's a good selection. Get out of here, Irishman. All right, some units dispersing. I like that. We know they won't return to the field. And we do have 26% of their troops routed here, but... They're still doing very well in certain areas here. See, they've rallied. That's never a good sign when enemy troops start to rally. That obviously means they still think there's a chance for a victory. Uh, and never good for us. So we definitely want to get across this bridge as quickly as we can. Uh, and hopefully just try to hold on a little longer until reinforcements arrive. Specifically the reinforcements that are coming from the other side of the bridge. Here we go. Come on, boys. Oh, still quite even here. It's just nail-biting, honestly. 15, yes! Amazing work. There we go. And we move forward with our fencibles. And these are mounted fencibles. Still very even there. I'm, I could be wrong on this. Uh, I think this unit right here, the militia battalion, will get closer on that flag. But the flag that they have is um, a loyalist Irish flag. So perhaps we do have some loyalist Irish fighting on our side. Uh, that, that certainly could be the case. Some Northern Irish. The enemy's starting to get some pretty nice shots here. I don't like that. Right. Those reinforcements are getting to the field, um, but just like the guys across the bridge, I think it's going to take a while for their guys to get here. We're going to have a little bit of breathing room uh, to try and break them before that happens. Come on, boys. Six. Why didn't their pikemen charge us? That's that's weird. Their pikemen in the south uh, did not charge us. Uh, if anybody can explain that to us, please do. All right, we're still trying to take the castle here. This is just kind of a, a, a fr an annoying location uh, because they just have one unit. We know we can beat it, but because they've taken that a fortification position, they kind of have a little defensive bonus. So it could take a turn or two just, just to get them out of there. Maybe even longer. Okay, we just rallied. Nice. We actually had one of our yeomanry uh, units rally. Unfortunately, still a lot of our men breaking here. You can see once again our fencibles breaking. 21... Uh, of our army. That's not good, guys. So we're gonna have to offset it there on the right side, and let's hope we can. Nice! A proper rally. Can our Grenadiers hold on another turn? Come on, Grenadiers. You're known for this. 25. Okay, it's gonna be our turn here. Let's see what we can do. Uh, can the cavalry charge into anything whatsoever? Nope. What about our infantry here? So we could potentially charge, but it wouldn't actually work in our favor, I don't think. Yeah, it's a bad situation, that's for sure. Um, hmm. Oh, boy. Line of sight is going to be blocked. I was hoping to get a charge here, but that's, that's going to take quite a long time. We join that only a seven percent chance of winning. That is a terrible chance of winning. Thirteen percent chance of winning here. Let's see if that changes at all. Uh, I'm going to try to fire at this disrupted unit. I don't think it's 
going to. So we might just be better off going ahead and laying down some fire. At least it was kind of effective. Just want to get the most damaged units possible to open fire on. Fragmented back here. Uh, let's. We're gonna have to. We're gonna have to hit just the artillery. We have no choice. All right, move forward, Dundas. For whatever reason, oh, because we're in combat here, he can't attack these guys. So we'll attack these guys on the left side. Okay, here we could potentially break uh, the train pikeman burns column. Let's hope so. There we go. So a break on the enemy pikeman, always a good thing. Uh, we've also got guys following through with the attack. But, but, but I really have to be very careful here. Very careful. Breaks. Beautiful. Beautiful. The mounted scouts. But see, again, we're taking a shot there from the side. That's going to be quite damaging. Let God let those balls round, uh, land true. That sounded weird. Uh, and let's see if we can knock them out of the castle. Come on, man. Just get out. We'll give you, we'll give you fair quarter. Just don't make us storm this place. As you can see, we can't possibly win a charge against the castle position. So we have to shoot them down pretty much. That's what we need to do. We've got the place completely surrounded. Okay, um, and we'll go for a charge right here on the volunteer skirmishers. They are going to evade. We will eventually catch up with them. In fact, they kind of disappeared off the field there. Okay, firing at the... Irishman. And I'm going to keep just the composite battalion a little farther from the enemy because I don't want um, the enemy breaking that unit. 20, and we still didn't fragment them? Come on. Come on. One more shot, I believe. Maybe nothing, yeah. Not really much of a shot. Um, can we hit any of these guys? No. I don't know how this is going to go, friends. It's it's an interesting battle. That's about all I can say. Ooh, I'm seeing some stuff here attacking a certain company. Hey, Robert Roberts, how you doing, buddy? Let me see. Yeah, seems like the pikemen are carrying the Irish efforts here. Absolutely. There's also a weird kids show called Fruit Ninja Frenzy Force, which I can imagine is the closest thing to hell on Earth. <laughs> oh, jeez. I love it, man. I, Alex, you're, you're actually talking me into getting this awful service. Pull back and consolidate. Now, when you say pull back and consolidate, um, are you talking about our men over in this in this region? Because doing that, and this is why I don't usually pull back in a pike and shot, uh, is going to require us to turn around and, you know, kind of pull back. I don't know if we can do it. I don't know. All right, let's end the turn. Here we go. And they did break cavalry right there. I don't know why we always fail the morale checks, but they don't. There we go. Getting some of them to disperse is always good. Maybe we can just ignore that guy at the castle and just move across the bridge. That's another thing we could do. Oh my god. Father Murphy's column just crushing our Grenadier Battalion. Finally broke. Luckily we didn't fail the morale check there, but still, man. That is annoying. Get off here, Irishman. So plenty of our guys are here are doing okay. So we just really need to... Uh, try and push these guys around to knock out the rest of the Irishmen. Um, use them to their utmost effectiveness, of course. So they're getting a flank attack here. Though I don't think the flank attack matters nearly as much um, if uh, if we've already fragmented or disrupted the enemy unit. I could be wrong, though. Boys.
Oh, there we go. They finally decided to fall back. <laughs> See, if I were them, I would have actually maybe stayed in the castle, but I think they've realized, no, we need to, uh, we need to get the hell out of here because if they get into this castle after all the work they have to do to get us, they're not going to leave a single man alive. So hopefully we can break that unit and get, get across the bridge at the same time. Thirty-four, beautiful. Disrupted. I'm liking it. I'm liking it. There we go, another disruption. And we've finally broken the artillery. We didn't even need to charge it. I think we pretty much killed every single man uh, manning those guns. But I have to say, up close and personal, that, that light artillery is very good. Um, obviously, at a distance, completely useless. Okay. This is where things are going poorly, and that's on the left side. So, trying to think of ways um, to improve that left side there. There we go. We had a unit rally. Yes. They aren't fragmented, but this improves our score slightly. And again, if we can get them to uh, 40, or excuse me, to 60%, uh, that's that's going to be a victory for us. The Light Dragoon Squad, they're heroes, guys. That, they're, they've held on. They're not fragmented. They're not breaking. They're just, they're just really strong. Okay, let's see. I almost feel like we need to do this charge um, because they're trying to attack our Light Dragoon Squadron. I might just go ahead and do the charge. Uh, one thing I will do is I'll move the line battalion up. I was expecting us to give that a sh uh, for that to give us a shot, but apparently not. So instead, I'll open fire there on the raw spearmen. And again, raw spearmen will break very quickly. Unfortunately, I think I'm going to have to face these peasants. Um, or else we're going to get a flank charge. So should be able to break. The Whoa, the peasants getting 46 against uh, fencibles. Uh, you know, these are actually trained British soldiers. That's a little unrealistic, but I hope we'll make we'll make up for it here. You know, totally out of range. Okay, let's see what we can, what we can do with these guys. Uh, obviously, breaking this unit would be great. So let's see if we can make that happen. 29. 21. Guess we won't be able to shoot him this turn. Uh, but we can already charge this unit and almost certainly win. <clears throat> Disrupted. At that point, they've also got a um, raw skirmisher unit here, but I'm not really worried about them. And let's see if we can get in with another guy here. Unfortunately, we're going to have to wait till next turn to charge across. But we've got the process started, at least. Now, in this case, I think I might uh, do what you, were t what you mentioned and actually fall back. So on this, uh, on this particular part of the battlefield, I will fall back because we know these guys are going to break either way. I'm so glad that did not cause any sort of issue. That's the best we can do is uh, support that unit with some, some supporting fire. Nice! Disrupted. This is what we want. Unfortunately, we're going to have to wait till next turn to break. What if we bring the cavalry over here? I don't know. I'm charging. 11% chance of a win. I'm going for it. 3% chance of a lost. So the chances are we'll win. <laughs> Those are the chances. Uh, not always the case.
Oh, that's right. We've got the unit that actually um, came back. Well, the no, actually, this is the regular scout unit. My apologies. Um, yeah, we'll move them over here. Just try to stay away from the enemy, pretty much. The scary thing is the area where they're actually doing quite well against us is the same area where our commander is. <laughs> so they definitely picked the right place to, uh, to set up a fight. See, I would go for a charge here if I thought I could get an instant break, but we know we can't, and that means that that Spearman unit, or a Pikeman unit, uh, could be a problem. So I think I'm just going to stay put, open fire. Even at a, an angle there, we still did a lot of damage. With this unit, however... 32, fragmented. Guys, if we can get one more good attack on them, they will break. Just one more successful attack. This cannon can't hit a damn thing. Look him over here, boys. <laughs> ah, I see light guns were just there to complement the infantry line and maybe even eat a charge and die so the enemy can spend another turn taking musket fire. Interesting. Okay, let's end the turn. Oh, I guess he could have hit that guy. I didn't even realize. Could have gotten two hits with that uh, cannon against that unit. Now that's annoying. One of the enemy units returned to the battlefield. Uh, thankfully, this guy's fragmented at this point. The guy crossing the bridge. A lot of their units are dispersing, just dropping their equipment and just refusing to even stay in formation, run, running away from the battlefield, essentially. And that's what we need. We can't have these guys um, rallying again. Oh, come on. You were doing so well, Light Dragoons. What happened? Look at all those Irishmen. Very even over here between the pikemen and the musketeers. Again, another Irishman unit dispersing. Don't have to worry about them coming back to the battlefield anytime soon. Fragmented on the fallback. We actually caused a fragmentation from their retreat. I like that. Unfortunately, that flank charge, yeah, that's a problem, man. I keep I, I keep forgetting that these pikemen units can essentially charge in any direction. Um, they're not like the musketman units that have to be facing a, an enemy or anything like that. Uh, yeah, that's, that's bad. Alright, so we'll try to break them as well. I believe in the actual battle, and the records here could be wrong, because it's, uh, the records were done by the British. In the Battle of Vinegar Hill, the British lost 100 men. Uh, here, we've certainly lost more than 100 men, without a doubt. And I believe the Irish lost 400 or something like that. All right, that's we finally got a little bit of a disruption. But those uh, reinforcements are getting here. They are arriving as we speak. I'm amazed that that one pikeman unit, though, across the river was able to fragment both of our guys. Just, just crazy. Just crazy. Wow. We just broke a unit with uh, no damage whatsoever. I think that's a first. All right, Needham's Cavalry reached the field. Where are his damned infantry? This should uh, improve our score because we just got reinforcements. So this will potentially improve our score, but right now the Irishmen are beating us. 37% of their uh, army routed, 39% of ours. Now we did auto break that unit. Hopefully we'll just continue across the river. But some of our own men, of course, routing, running off the field, running for their lives, really. 
That's what we lean. That's what we like to see. One of our units rallying up there. Very even between those two as well. And very even there too. Now there, we finally got the auto break of our dragoons. That's too bad. I just hope the spearmen don't charge into these guys right here. Or at least that we can break them before that occurs. In fact, I'm going to see if I can charge them here with the flank charge. And yes, enemy will break on contact. Beautiful, guys. Beautiful. Another break on the enemy side right there. Two volunteer musket brigades. And we are on top of Vinegar Hill right now. Uh, but most of the army uh, of the on the enemy side now, as you can see, it's going to be their, uh, their reinforcing units. So this is a problem. It's definitely a problem. Um... See if there's anything I can do about them. Definitely want to try and take out the weaker links here. But I think that's going to be easier said than done. Oh, let's fire with the yeoman. Nine, not bad. We got the yeoman here too. Nice shooting. Twenty-four, not bad at all. All right, what, what 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 can we do right here? So obviously our focus is going to be the raw skirmishers, uh, and these should be pretty easy to knock out, believe it or not. So let's go for the raw skirmishers. I'm not even going to move close to them. I'm just going to open fire. Twenty-five, thirty-nine. How do raw skirmishers get thirty-nine against us? <laughs> Damn you, boys! These guys have never trained a day in their life, and they just got a perfect hit. I think it's what uh, what Ariman was saying earlier that you know when you're really that close, it's what difference does it honestly make? Okay, now we have to deal with this problem. Uh, we'll definitely charge them because they're pretty badly injured. But the fact that we had to dedicate so many troops to that unit, without a doubt, um, a problem, a big problem. We can't be wasting time like that. As you can see, all of these guys are just kind of waiting for these guys to get across the bridge and for these guys to destroy the trained pikemen. So they've accomplished their goal, which was pretty much just to waste our time. Uh, what I will do is move the light guns forward so they can fire next turn. What about over here? What's this? Gonna, what's going to happen here? Hmm. Yeah, that charge would not work. trying to think here guys we can maybe move this guy out here open fire on this disrupted unit potentially fragment him oh man it's all down to fate now boys it's all down to fate Yeah, Needham's cavalry is it's only bringing us in um, a cavalry unit and the fencible squadron here. We'll try to make it work, but I don't think it's going to work very well. I just don't think they can really provide much help, honestly. Let's do this, uh, and let's move the light guns out just a little bit. Not too far out. Why can Rostov says I don't like Shogun 2? I'm that surprises me because honestly, um, Shogun 2 I think is the best uh, Total War game, and I, I may I would actually put maybe maybe Rome Rome Total War, uh, and then Shogun 2, but it's it's up there for me, man. And the multiplayer on that used to be so good. Uh, they completely gave up on the multiplayer, but it used to be so amazing. All right, let's end the turn. Here we go. Residual shooting phase. And it's their residual shooting phase, I believe.
Come on, boys. Do it for the king. 15 down. But, man, those pikemen are still going strong. Oh, uh, I think that's one of the enemy troops rallying. I, I certainly hope not. That would have been the first enemy troop to rally. So far, they've, uh, they've just continued to kind of get the hell out of here. They know the battle is lost, or think the battle is lost. Uh, it probably isn't, especially with the way that uh, the enemy raw pikemen, the raw pikemen, are performing against us. Here we go. Nice, nice disruption on the raw skirmishers. Hopefully, we can break them. But we are very much on top of Vinegar Hill itself. The fortification up here, too. We could even take the light fortification. That would give us a slight defensive boost. But probably not, not enough to make a difference. Oh my goodness. They just tried to charge. We evaded incredibly against all odds. Nice. Broke the enemy unit. And they ran right off the field. So those flanking shots that are also doing a lot of damage to us. But yeah, you're right. The, the pikemen are the ones really holding the Irish in this battle. Okay, fingers crossed. This is going to be our residual shooting phase. Come on. At least disrupt or fragment some units. Here we go. So that's some of our units getting off the field, not, never returning. Uh, still at 42-43. I mean, this is so close. We need some of these boys to rally up. Rally up, men. No good reason to leave the field. There we go. Oh, and we auto-broke. <laughs> Unbelievable. The enemy raw pikemen. There, there's definitely a script error there. There's no way the raw pikemen should be that um, that strong. There's just no way. The veteran pikemen should be. All right, let's see, boys. We could charge and uh, try and break them. Doesn't look like the odds are in our favor, though. Although next round, no. Next round, we would definitely lose. Okay, let's see what we've got to work with here. Looks like some of the enemy units rallying. That is a horrific sign. Whoa! Really nice disruption there. Again, not enough for a full break, nonetheless. Those are the kind of shots we need to get. Okay, let's see. Uh, I'm trying to look for any disrupted units up here on the br on the actual hill itself. But it looks like it's just that one. And these reinforcements, the enemy reinforcements... Uh, are, are very fresh. Very fresh. Move forward, boys. We're going to open fire on the volunteer pikemen here. It's all we can really do. We'll also move up to the um, the actual fortifications and open fire on Reverend Roche's column. charge we did manage to capture them in the rear attack and yes slaughtered that unit they're gonna get the hell out of here in fact they're gonna disperse and that gives us time to either turn back here and face these units or continue to try to knock out the raw pikemen i mean again they're raw pikemen they should break on contact but apparently not Seventeen! How did we not break them with that? Come on. I 
Again, we can't really do much with those guys. However... <sighs> these are kind of strange. Um, it's a strange brigade because the supplementary yeomanry, if you take a look here, they have a musket and a sword. I don't know if that means that they get off their horses and actually fight with muskets, or even crazier, that they're actually firing a musket on a horse. Um, I don't think that's safe. <laughs> I definitely don't think that that's good for the horse. Um, but who knows? Who knows, man? What do we want to do with these guys? I almost feel like with Needham's, we should just, yeah, kind of hide. Try and get out of here. Okay, here we go. Let's take a look at the chat. For the losses incurred at our forces, we should offer the Irish a modest proposal. <laughs> yes, I think you're right. <laughs> I think you're absolutely right. Yeah, that's true, rambling. Um, it, the thing is, it just it seemed like on that initial attack, it looked good. But I think on turn two, they start to come back and do quite well. You're going to get into the flank on the hill. I hope so, man. I don't, I, I don't feel like we're going to win this one, but uh, let's hope so. No!
Okay. Thanks, guys. Sorry about that. My bullet needed a little walk. Uh. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate that. Dawn of War. How you doing, bud? And Will Bob. Very cool. All right, guys. Let's see what we can do here. <laughs> Enemy trained pikemen. It's getting crazy on this battlefield. 42-41. With us losing, some of the enemies rallying here. Maybe their reinforcements will make the difference. Certainly possible. There's another pikeman unit dispersing. I always like to see that. Come on, boys. For the crown. Come back. At no, a flank attack. I was worried about that. We knew that was going to happen on top of the hill. See, so I think one major mistake. Getting on top of that hill, I thought it was going to give us a height advantage. It didn't. It put us into a complete ambush. Uh, it just completely allowed the enemy to surround us, smash us. Everything went wrong. Absolutely everything. And now their pikemen are completely outmatching us in combat here. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. We've traded a defeat for Vinegar Hill. And we're still not across the bridge here. Forty six percent on our side, forty one percent on the enemy. That's bad. And we got some dispersals. Just the grenadiers have dispersed. When the grenadiers disperse, you know the battle's over. You know the battle's over. When the big guys go home, that's it. I am gonna go ahead and lay down lay down the blade here, guys. We could have approached this battle in a much better way. Uh, what I will do here is um since you guys have been so kind to uh, stop by the field of glory. Um, and specifically the Field of Glory uh, videos, like our Revolutionary War video that we did um, last week is is just gotten some great views. And I think we're up to like 600, uh, which is really cool. So um, just to, um, you know, first of all, thank you guys for all of that. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to go into the modifications in game so you guys can see all of the different battles that we can play. No, I'm not talking about the vanilla battles. I'm talking about all of the battles we can play. Um, and from there, maybe we can go ahead and decide on the next Pike and Shot battle uh, we upload here on the channel. Believe me, if I thought there was a chance of winning, I would keep going, but I, I don't think there is. I think, I think we're finished here. Uh, unless we get, like, really, really lucky shots, uh, it ain't happening. No way. I was, so, I was so thinking we were going to win, too. I was so cocky um, at the midpoint of this fight. But then things started to turn. They started to turn very, very badly, very quickly. Yeah, I think that's going to be it. So here's what we're going to do, guys. Um, I want to exit the game properly so that we can see the um, retreat from battle. There we go. So we can actually see the um, casualties. So this is way, way, way above the actual Battle of Vinegar Hill. This was a much, much, much more bloody battle. Um, Nathan says that you should replay this and keep your army at arm's length to the uh, Irish. I would totally replay this in a few weeks if, if you guys were okay with that, with replaying a battle. Because I think we can get a victory out of this. I really do. 
Uh, I think maybe if we didn't charge, we, we would have won this one. We would have definitely won. Um, and obviously, it's also very important to break all the units at Vinegar Hill before those reinforcements make it there. Because as you can see there, as soon as they made it there, we were done. We were just finished. Um, so here's what we're going to do, guys. Um, and please let me know down below what you think. So um, let's get to the historical battles. And we'll plan out what you guys would like to see next time. So we have already done Brandywine Creek. We've already done Alundi. We've already done v Vinegar Hill. So let's download something new. Um, we've got so many different battles here. Uh, Balaclava, Gamenhof, Guinea Gate, uh, Pavia. Pavia is in 1525. Guinea Gate is in 1513. The Battle of Serignola we've done um, on the Slytherin channel. Uh, we've also played the Battle of Saratoga uh, from the Revolutionary War, so I'm not going to play that one again. Uh, but anything else besides Waterloo and Saratoga, uh, I'll let you guys pick. So just take a look here. We've even got the Battle of Falkirk uh, from uh, Braveheart fame, and potentially we could play as the Scots. Uh, but just let me know. I'm kind of going through the battles here so you guys uh, can take a look at all of them. Obviously, I can't look at all of them um, or else we'd be here forever. But I'm just, uh, you know, kind of going up and down. Look at the year. Look at the battle. See what you guys would like to, uh, to watch next time. And I will make sure to play it. Uh, so just put that in the comments section. I want to, again, I want to thank uh, Ariman for moderating, and I want to thank Bostova for the very, very kind donation, and everybody for showing up and sharing in this humiliating defeat, man. I was so cocky. I'm usually, uh, I'm, I'm pretty certain that I'm going to lose most of the time, but in, in this case, I was just, like, way too cocky, I think. What do you guys think? So what would you like to see, guys, for the next battle we play here? Um, a bunch of different choices here. And frankly, I don't know a lot of these battles myself. Um, I think I know like maybe 20% of them, um, but the rest are new to me. We do have the Battle of Culloden as well. Uh, Culloden. Lepanto might be fun, says Alex. It's definitely It would definitely be unique. Okay. The Battle of Lepanto. Let's, uh, let's take a look at Lepanto. So we would obviously play the single player. And this is made by Jomni. Um, a lot of these guys like Odinetheus and Edward, um, they make most of these. But every now and again, you guys like you get guys like Hobbes and Jomni, which don't have a lot of mods to their name. So it'll be interesting to see um, how they differ from the other guys. Let's take a look at this one. Okay. Oh, that's beautiful. The Battle of Lepanto took place on 7 October uh, 1571 at the Gulf of Patras, Ionian Sea between the Holy League and the Ottoman Empire. It was the largest and last major battle between war galleys in the Western world. Okay, interesting. So this would, yeah, this is definitely different. You can, you make a great point there. Um, this is a, a naval battle in Pike and Shot. This just, just goes to show you how great this game is. Uh, especially with uh, the modifications. And Will Bob is saying that the Battle of Bosworth Field. I think I would be more likely to play the Battle of Bosworth Field. Um, so let's take a look at Bosworth. And I believe that is the Scots versus the uh, English, if I'm not mistaken. The Battle of Bosworth Field. Do we have it here? We must, right? There it is. 1485. No, this is... No, not no. It's a different battle. See, I, I, I don't know all these. And actually, this might be an entire campaign. Uh, occasionally, there are modifications for entire campaigns, but they can be a little flimsy. Okay, Bosworth. Oh, that's right. It's the War of the Roses. What's wrong with me? Henry Tudor, Duke of Richmond, has invaded England with French support to press the Lancastrian claim to the throne. I actually think we have played this one. We may not have. Let me just search here. Uh, I'm just going to type in Bosworth, Agrippa Maxenius, um, or War of the Roses, Agrippa Maxenius. I do believe we've played this one, and if we have... Um, Agrippa Maxentius. Then I'll go ahead and put a link here for you. I'm almost certain that we've played this battle. Yes, we have. I found it. I actually... Wow, this is amazing. We actually have a playlist for this. That's something that well, I don't hello. usually have, guys. So let me share the playlist here. I would really appreciate it if everybody takes a look at it. Uh, this is our War of the... Are you serious? I can't share a playlist? Come on, man. Um, okay, this is weird. Um, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to send a message to Ariman here aka the rambling exile um on steam because for whatever reason 
I can't share on my own game. This is, this is typical. Okay, let me see if, if you could share it. Um, not sure if you can. Thanks anyway, Araman. Um, so there we go, guys. Yeah, we have the entire um, War of the Roses itself. So not just the Battle of uh, Bosworth Field, but uh, a bunch of different battles. And we are playing with the forces of King Richard. So uh, yeah, I'll let you see how that goes. That was actually quite a long campaign. Prestipens as Jacobites might be fun as well. Oh, yes, definitely. The Jacobites, uh, always a fun battle, but I, I can never see the Jacobites ever winning, like ever, uh, no matter what happens. That being said, I agree, uh, a very fun battle. Alex says, I think I'm sold on this game. That's awesome. Awesome. Um, Aramon, I sent you something on, I'm not sure if you can, man, on Steam. Could you post that in the uh, chat? So that people can check out the um, the playlist for um, for the War of the Roses. Yeah, it's cool, Alex. I mean, one thing that I that I really love about the game is the fact that you can you know they, they have stuff all the way from the 14th century all the way up to the 19th century. Um, at, well, if you look at the mods, if you don't look at the mods, it's pretty much sticks from the 14th to well, actually the 15th to the 17th centuries is is mostly where it stays. Thank you so much, man. So, guys, if you want to see the War of the Roses campaign, uh, click that link right there that uh, the Rambling Exile put up. Um, and that's actually this game with the War of the Roses. So, since you mentioned Bosworth Field, Will Bob, I think you'll like that one. Um, but we are fighting on the forces, the forces of King Richard, which, of course, as most know, eventually lost. Um, but uh, we won't be asking for any horses in that campaign. I'll let you. I'll tell you that. I love the book, the look of the royal standard. Yeah, it's cool. I love the look of the, all the royal standards. Not the, not even the royal standards, just the standards in this game. Like even in the battle we just played, um, if you notice the Irish, they had like the individual clan flags, uh, the individual um, you know regimental flags. It's really really cool. Uh, they really go into a lot of detail in this game. Well, guys, thank you so much. I've been rambling for quite a while here. But um, as you know, this is definitely a game I really enjoy playing. So thank you for stopping by. Um, as always, if you haven't already, please do follow us on twitch.tv slash Maxenius. Uh, that's where we stream most of our stuff. So if you like the live streaming, um, this is definitely um, the place to head. Wow, your comment is too short. Okay, I think that's maybe that was the reason before. Here it is. Does that work? There Nope, I don't see it. I can't even post a Twitch link. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Thank you, YouTube. They have they get better every day, guys. You gotta love YouTube. They really just, every day, so much better. So many improvements. <laughs> I'll catch you guys on the next stream. Thanks for stopping by.